House of the Dragon TV series is a prequel to Game of Thrones, which tells a story about the Targaryen Empire and how they rose to rule the Seven Kingdoms for centuries. With over 14 dragons, the Targaryen dynasty claimed, built allies with strong houses. The Targaryen house begins to fall apart after 193 years of events linked to the Game of Thrones. King Viserys named his daughter Rhaenyra as the heir to the Iron Throne. At that point of naming Rhaenyra as the heir, she did not have a son. The court presumed a change would happen when King Viserys got a son, but his decision was firm to maintain her as their heir. This created a division of the houses and so friction across the realms and allies. In this video, we will give you a recap of the House of the Dragon TV show season 1, which has had 10 episodes so far and the good news is, season 2, that's correct, season 2 is already rolling the studios and shooting has started. This video however will highlight the main events in all episodes in season 1 and this is a recap and summary that we will be keeping simple and short. Do stay with us while we give you the real deals in all the episodes. Once more we want to thank you all for helping us get to 1k subscribers. Support this channel by taking us to 5k subscribers, yes, take us to 5k by liking this video and doing well to share and subscribe. Remember, liking this video goes a long way to help us. Let's begin with episode 1, which is named The Heirs of the Dragon. House of the Dragon Season 1 Episode 1 welcomes us to when King Jaehaerys named King Viserys to the Iron Throne. We witnessed that the ideal person was to be Princess Rhaenys, a cousin of King Viserys, but as the Targaryen tradition states, a woman cannot rule the Seven Kingdoms and sit on the Iron Throne. We have the introduction of Princess Rhaenyra and her dragon Cyrax. In the episode, we get to see King Viserys' wife, Queen Amar, who was heavily pregnant. At that moment, King Viserys only had one daughter, who was Princess Rhaenyra. King Viserys was expecting a son, but the unfortunate thing happened when he chose to save the baby by telling the maester to cut his wife and take the baby out. It was not an easy decision due to the complicated situation. We learned that Queen Amar has had several miscarriages and that this was the only way and hope for King Viserys to have a son as their heir to the Iron Throne. The baby is sticking out well alive, but Balon, as named, did not live for more than 24 hours. Now, in the aftermath of Amar and Balon's death, the small council reconvenes and Otto tells the king that as much as he deserves time to mourn, he must deal with a line of succession. A new heir must be named, but Otto can't possibly thank them, allowing Daemon Targaryen to take that role especially after seeing how he's amassed further power as the leader of the City Watch. During the council, Lord Otto gets informed about Prince Daemon, where he celebrated the death of Balon, the son of King Viserys who lived less than a day. King Viserys heats up and summons Prince Daemon. Prince Daemon is questioned about his statement and as a brother, he could not deny it. He believes that was his way of mourning. He shares his sentiment with passion as to why his own brother has refused to accept him as the next heir to the Iron Throne. King Viserys sends Prince Daemon out of King's Landing. Prince Daemon leaves for Runestone with his dragon. At that point, we got a clue about the doom of the king and why he needed an heir so badly. In the latter part of House of the Dragon Episode 1, Princess Rhaenyra is installed as the next heir to the Seven Kingdoms and to the Iron Throne, a tradition that no lord or house assumed will not be broken but King Viserys took such a courageous step. Princess Rhaenyra is named heir and all the houses swear to protect her and also as witnesses. Now we move on to episode 2, named The Rogue Prince. Episode 2 of House of the Dragon begins after 6 months. After the events that transpired last week, where a Myro chaos sets in at the council, four ships have been lost and Lord Corlys is not pleased. A series of islands populated by sellswords and led by Crabfeeder. Otto is offered compensation for one of his own ships being lost, but he's not interested in that. He wants the king to take action. After listening to several different candidates, each with a lack of combat experience, Rhaenyra chooses Sir Kristen Cole, the guy who bested Daemon in the tournaments last episode. 
Another great turnout was Lord Otto Hightower, who pushed his daughter to keep the king company after the demise of Queen Amar. He knew the king needed to remarry to reproduce male heirs, and part of his game plan was to push his daughter Alicent to the king. This episode had a lot of conniving and convincing moments, which we believe started building the betrayal periods ahead. There is a daddy-daughter moment between King Viserys and Princess Rhaenyra, and this was time for the King Viserys to convince his daughter about remarrying, not just anyone, but her best friend. As the show goes on, we witness the wounds that have begun forming on the king's body, and this remained a question of someone who had poisoned the throne to kill King Viserys. The king is not that worried, but his hand and the maester are troubled. They believe that this is not normal. There is huge banter that comes in episode 2 between two princesses, Rhaenyra and Rhaenys. And this boils down to the fact that her father chose Rhaenyra as heir, whereas King Viserys could marry and bear sons for the realm. It was obvious that King Viserys had found a new love, but what was that that he was looking for at this dying moment? It was time for him to get more children, especially sons. Now this is what the council seeks and nothing else. Viserys is called to an emergency meeting with the small council. A dragon's egg has been stolen, while Daemon has seized Dragonstone and is held up with his gold clothes. Daemon has also slept. Daemon has also left a taunting note, inviting Viserys to his wedding to Miseria. Viserys wants to go personally, but Otto interjects, pointing out it's too dangerous and suggesting he should go instead. Otto Hightower confronts Daemon at Dragonstone, but it turns out that this will be bloodshed, and that's not what they seek. Rhaenyra arrives with her dragon, and in a few words exchanged with her uncle, she gets back the dragon egg. Viserys intends to marry Lady Alicent Hightower, Otto's daughter. Corlys is not happy, and calls it absurdity. Looking at the close ties with Alicent, she feels betrayed. Her best friend has stolen her dad. The show ends when Corlys meets up with Daemon, claiming that they have been made from the same cloth and believes that they should work together. After all, if Viserys won't do anything, maybe Daemon and his bloodthirsty gold cloaks will. Crabfeeder is backed by powerful allies from the three cities and they want to see Westeros weakened. Release after release, where we get to episode 3 of House of the Dragon titled Second of His Name. This episode welcomed us to the first war between Crabfeather and the Valerian. Daemon shows up with a dragon alone attempting to kill off swords, but they are well equipped to deal with the dragon now. Two years later in time in episode 3 of House of the Dragon, King Viserys now has a son with Alicent and he's a two year old. Otto is still pulling the strings behind a curtain of deception. Lady Alicent is heavily pregnant while the family waits for another baby. At this point, she is no longer Lady Alicent, but Queen Alicent. King Viserys encourages Rhaenyra to join him in an upcoming hunt as part of the King's celebrations, and she's not happy, believing that the King's son is now next in line for the throne and she would have a chance at it herself. Everyone is in agreement that the Crown should get involved and help out, destroying Pat Fida once and for all. Viserys though is refusing to do so, and that could well come back to bite him. He later sends out a message to his brother at a very late moment, when the Valerian and Daemon have planned their final move to defeat the crab feeder and his people. We saw that Rhaenyra was not pleased by her father's decision to marry her quickly. She confronts her father and anger flares all over the place. She scratches up a horse and runs away instead. Sir Criston follows and manages to calm her down. In the late hours, Rhaenyra is attacked by a wild boar, so Kristen steps in to save her. Viserys got mad at the fact that a celebration has turned into politics. He wants his daughter to be happy. His lords are trying to betroth his two-year-old son to his own daughter, Rhaenyra. In the morning, Viserys shows up in the woods where he finds his soldiers have captured a stag. After several attempts, he manages to stab the heart while ending the life of the stag. Interestingly though, that white stag actually shows up before Rhaenyra. This signified honour and glory. Before the episode end, Sir Leonor and Daemon pull a huge plan. Daemon baits the crab feeder and his people. Daemon follows the crab feeder into the caves. When he returns, he does so with the severed carcasses of the crab feeder. 
The time jump continues in the House of the Dragon, taking us to episode 4 with the title King of the Narrow Sea. Prince Daemon returns to King's Landing with a crown. He presents the crown to his brother as King of the Narrow Sea. King Viserys is pleased and calls in for a celebration to welcome his brother back home. Otto Hightower is not convinced about the return of Prince Daemon. He plans to stall him. Before that, many men are in line to seek Princess Rhaenyra's hand in marriage in Storm's End. Humour breaks in, disagreement sets in, and a life is lost. The arrival of Prince Daemon brought some new romantic scenes in the episode. Prince Daemon makes an internal plan to take Princess Rhaenyra out to one of his brothels. Things get heated up with Prince Daemon making a move on his own niece. In the end, he scrams and leaves Rhaenyra hanging. Not knowing that there was a spy looking at these two people, the spy sends a report to the hand of the king. Rhaenyra returns to her chambers. Rhaenyra returns to her chambers, but this time not just to sleep alone, but seduced Sir Kristin, who guards the princess. In episode three, it was noticed that Princess Rhaenyra had been eyeing Sir Kristin, and it was of no news to see both of them in this act. The princess is no more a maiden. King Viserys is furious by the news he heard from Lord Otto Hightower. Alicent, on the other hand, is disappointed. Alicent seeks to find the truth and to understand what really transpired. At the end of the episode, King Viserys sacks his hand out of anger. He believes Lord Otto is stalking her daughter and therefore cannot trust his judgement. The king sends tea to Princess Rhaenyra to clear her of any unwanted circumstances. At this moment, the king must protect his family. Prince Daemon is sent out of King's Landing again. Moving on is episode 5. Lord Lionel has been chosen as the new hand of the king. We confirm the first murder in this episode where Prince Daemon killed his own wife. We knew in the previous episodes that he despised her so badly. Viserys sails to Driftmark to pay a visit to House Valerian. Not only that, but to seek Lord Corlys' support in marrying his son to Princess Rhaenyra, the next heir to the Iron Throne. Lord Corlys is pleased but Princess Rhaenys insists that that is a wrong move for them. There is gossip from Lord Larry to Queen Alicent. This time it was about Princess Rhaenyra, her affair and the tea she took. Queen Alicent is shocked by this news. Sir Kristen on the other hand jumps to tell Princess Rhaenyra to abandon her post and seek an adventure with him. Things don't end well between these two after Sir Kristen confesses to Queen Alicent that night. Rhaenyra sneaked out. The King is dying. The wounds are getting worse and at this moment there is very little left for him to do. He has already arranged the marriage ceremony between Sir Leonor and Princess Rhaenyra. They both know that they are not compatible and secretly make an agreement to go separate ways after the ceremony. Unfortunately, the ceremony did not go as expected. The partner of Sir Leonor is beaten and killed by Sir Kristin. At the end of the episode, Sir Kristin is seen by Queen Alison as he was trying to take his life. She pardons him and takes him by her side. The Princess and the Queen, as the title of episode 6, builds its story around the differences that have come to set in. The episode welcomes the labour hours of Princess Rhaenyra. It is recorded that she had already had two sons and is yet to deliver the next baby. Upon the delivery, Queen Alison calls for the baby. Not just anything, but to confirm the looks of the baby. There were rumours that fans can attest is true that Princess Rhaenyra had been sleeping with Sir Harwin, a night guard, and his father is the Hand of the King. They believe that the children of Rhaenyra are bastards, but King Viserys refuses to accept that. The children of Queen Alicent and Rhaenyra are being taught about dragons, and we find that the first two sons of Princess Rhaenyra are being part of this dragon lesson class. Queen Alicent has been preparing her first son Aegon for the throne, but the boy refuses to see the real world. His attitude is taken aback by his mother. In the episode, Prince Daemon marries Lena, the daughter of Lord Corlys. They both have two daughters and are looking forward to receiving another baby. But unfortunately, Lena makes her dragon burn her due to complicated labour. Her house falls in dismay, but life has to go on for them. A shocking moment happens when Larry takes a dirty job by killing his own brother, who is the father to the children of Princess Rhaenyra and her father. That was very cruel of him. 
He has been paid in another way. Later at the court, Queen Alison and Princess Rhaenyra try to make peace. The house has been divided and each are building their own allies to rule the Seven Kingdoms. King Viserys in this episode looks different. He has lost an arm and waiting patiently to die. But before he goes, he wants his house reunited, stronger for never. Episode 7 begins and in this episode, everything happens at Driftmark. The funeral of Lena takes place with most family members present to mourn the dead. We see the rift between families and the emotional moments among the houses. Lord Corlys and Princess Rhaenyra have lost their child. It just dawned on them that they could lose Sir Leonard. Prince Daemon finds his niece, Princess Rhaenyra, after a very long time. They both rekindle their feelings and plan ahead to get married, but they need to make some sacrifices. They plan a murder of Sir Leonor, as this is the only way they can marry. The plan sets out better for Sir Leonor, a great spin-off, as he flees. Lord Corlys and Princess Rhaenys are believed to have lost Sir Leonor. In this episode, a lot of sacrifices were made. Aemon, the second son of Queen Alicent, in the night steals a dragon, and this was the dragon that belonged to Lyanna, the wife of Daemon. He pays for that with his eye. After a fight between him, the children of Daemon and the children of Rhaenyra, an eye for a dragon, a sacrifice has been made. The fight was not just about the dragons, but the fact that Princess Rhaenyra's kids are bas- <laughs> Yeah. After this horrible incident of Aemon losing his eyes, his mother, Queen Alicent, is furious and wishes to take an eye of the offender. Everyone is shocked by his action after King Viserys had made a decision. She later pulls a knife to take revenge but ends up cutting Princess Rhaenyra's hand. Next is episode 8, The Lord of the Tide Starts, which is the episode's name. We learn it's been six years and months since Princess Rainey saw her husband, Lord Corlys. Lord Corlys is in a bad state and he's in a battle for his life. This is where Vaemon comes in to claim Driftmark. Now looking at the situation with his brother, Lord Corlys, he is claiming to be the heir to Driftmark. This matter is sent to the King of the Seven Kingdoms to rule. The ruling of who should be Lord of Driftmark begins. Lord Otto Hightower starts as both parties share their reasons. In a few minutes, King Viserys steps in with a very different look this time. At the submission, Baymon makes an abomination statement. And within seconds, a Valerian blade chops off his head, leaving his tongue on. It is confirmed that Luke must inherit Driftmark. Prince Daemon is seen picking up two eggs from the dragon's den. He hands them to his men to take to warming chambers. We see the first son of Princess Rhaenyra, Jace, learning High Valerian. Daemon comes in to share a message with Princess Rhaenyra. Vaemond is challenging the heir of the Driftmark. They need to go to King's Landing to defend themselves. Upon their arrival, they realised a lot has changed. King Viserys is already dying, and it is very little that they can do. Princess Rhaenyra, upon arriving, pledges allegiance to Princess Rhaenys and wishes for their children to marry just to unite the houses. In the mid of the episode, Aegon assaults a maid, which Queen Alicent later finds and pays her off and gives her a moon tea to drink, which is expected to clear Aegon's seed inside of her. In the latter part, a suffering King Viserys falls for the last dinner with his family. At the family dinner, peace reigned at the beginning, with Rhaenyra and Alicent acknowledging their efforts and devotion towards the house. Aemond and Jace stir a look which later gets Aemon upset and in revenge makes an uncalled utterance to annoy his nephews. A fight breaks in between Aemon, Jace, Luke and Aegon. A dying King Viserys shares a prophecy and a dream with Alicent. Alicent on the other hand takes it the wrong way and this sparks the existing smoke into one big fire. House of the Dragon Episode 9 drops with the Green Council which indicates Hightower House is in power. The peaceful king has passed and this has raised chaos in King's Landing following the last words from the mouth of the King Viserys to Queen Alicent. The words of King Viserys were an old prophecy but Queen Alicent upon hearing misunderstood it. Now Alicent and Otto Hightower assemble the small council to share the news of the king's passing as well as his dying wish to install Aegon onto the throne. 
During the session, Sir Kristen Cole murders Lord Lyman. Otto Hightower forces some of the lords to bend their knee before they lose their lives. Acorn has fled his chambers. Lord Otto sends out two guards to look for him, and so does Alicent. The Hightowers are ruling now, but Alicent wants to be the decision maker. Lord Otto wants Rhaenyra dead, but Alicent does not agree. In episode 9, we see why Lord Larry has been spending time with Queen Alicent, and it was just an exchange of information for pleasure. Aegon is later found, but a price has to be paid to the White Worm. Otto Hightower delivers his promise and sends his grandson away. After Aegon had been installed as the king, Rhaenys, who had been kept locked up, manages to escape with her dragon, comes out from the ground and fear and emotions rise. People begin running helter-skelter, lives will be lost definitely. Rainy sends a signal to the Alicent and his family as she flies away with her dragon. Now we jump onto the final episode of House of the Dragon. Season 1 of House of the Dragon has ended. This time we will be giving you some differences that we spotted in the book. But that will be at the end of the recap, yeah? So do well to stay with us while we're giving you a full recap of House of the Dragon Season 1 Episode 10. The Greens are coming for you, Rhaenyra. And for your children. At the beginning of this episode, Rhaenyra finds her son, Luke. Now, Luke is looking at the map of Westeros, and he tells her mother that he does not want the Sea Snake to die, and he is not prepared to be the heir of Driftmark. But as her mother, she encourages her son, Luke. Just as her father prepared her for the Iron Throne, she must also prepare him to rule. Rhaenys shows up immediately and informs all those present about the death of King Viserys. She tells them that Aegon has been crowned King of the Seven Kingdoms. She further tells them how she was treated by Queen Alicent in particular. Now Daemon wonders why Rhaenys did not do something but she makes it clear, this is not her war. But that war is not mine to begin. And therefore she cannot begin it. Like. I want none of this. I'm part of this, but I'm not starting it. Now Damon is furious, yeah? And he begins to think about how it all happened. The Greens are coming for you, Rhaenyra. You should leave at once, she pleads. The Greens are coming for you, Rhaenyra. You should leave at once, as she pleads. Meanwhile, Damon sets up soldiers along the perimeter and decides to try and make themselves look stronger than they are. Ask me if that's a wise move. Now time is of the essence. Both Jace and Luke are brought before Rhaenyra when she reveals everything that's happened. Jace approaches Daemon and informs him that he cannot make any decision without the approval of Rhaenyra. As we know Daemon already, he ignored. Now he's bitter about the situation and he just quickly wants revenge. All these happenings sent Rhaenyra into forced labour, like she was pregnant after all. Her cramps and agonisation begin and she gives birth, but unfortunately, the babies are still born. A heartbreaking moment for Rhaenyra and her family. Now, this is one of the most horrific scenes fans have witnessed so far. Like, this is not easy to take in. Damon sees a bit of it, like most people, I guess, we were watching and had to fast forward. Damon sees a bit of it, but quickly leaves the morn before the baby is cremated. Now in the wake of this, Sir Eric arrives and swears his fealty to Rhaenyra, who has her own crown and people by her side. Like, you get it, both sides are trying to like fight this out with their own people. And of course, this does not compare to the might of Alicent and Aegon's entire command at King's Landing. But it's a start at least, you know, you got to start somewhere, you cannot win a war just by yourself. Looking at the map of Westeros, yeah, they begin to plan their attack but they must first build allies, as Rhaenyra indicated. Before the team continues to plan the attack, they are informed about a ship that has arrived on Dragonstone, which bears Alicent's banner. At this point you're thinking, is it starting already? <laughs> wow. Otto Hightower has arrived, and just as they make their entry, Damon stops them to question their treacherous act. This man is looking for action straight off the bat. Now, Otto Hightower is here to trade terms. Just as he asks for Rhaenyra, a dragon flies over them, landing behind the men of Otto Hightower. I don't know about you, but if I was one of them men, I would be terrified, yeah? In enemy land, not knowing what's gonna happen, Rhaenyra is here. 
Otto Hightower shares the message that Rainey's already delivered and presents her terms to her. She must bend the knee to Aegon II, the Conqueror, which we all know is not the chosen heir to the Iron Throne. Viewers know this, they don't know this. Rhaenyra tells Otto Hightower that her answer will reach them by tomorrow, or by the morrow. However, he has a page from Alison's book, intent on swaying her and bringing up the love that they once had together. Cheeky, cheeky and clever. Rhaenyra weighs her options carefully, holding restraint while everyone wishes for war. Everyone's just on the brink, waiting. Lord Corlys finds admiration in this and shows up with Rainey sometime later to find Daemon missing from the room. Man's gone, dipped. Corlys points out that Rhaenyra has the full support of the house and his fleet. Rhaenyra is not actually going to war just yet and decides to play the waiting game. Like she, she's a chess pro right now. Lord Corlys is back. He admits that their quest to win the Iron Throne has cost them a lot. At this point, they must neglect all other things and focus on their lives. But his wife, Rhaenyra, breaks it to him. Doom is coming and his grandchildren will need their support. I think Corlys is a peaceful and reasonable man. Even when he knew that Daemon had killed his brother and upon hearing the reason, man was just like, that, that's probably justice. Corlys and Rhaenys step down to meet Princess Rhaenyra and her team. He reveals that he has full control of the Stepstones and the Narrow Sea. This means that they can control the flow of trade and travel into King's Landing. Not just that, but they could also lay siege to the Red Keep and force the Green Surrender. Like, this is really, really good for them. Now, while the plan goes on, Rhaenyra must find who her allies are. Messages must be sent across, including Winterfell, the Eri, and Stormsend. Jay suggests that dragons should go and not ravens. They will present themselves better, command respect, and be quicker. It's like three birds, no, three dragons, one stone. Rhaenys, Jace, and Luke ride their dragons to their respective places. While Daemon shows up to tame a wild dragon, Luke arrives at Storm's End. Unfortunately, they have a much bigger dragon waiting in the wings. And of course, we know whose dragon that is Aemond. Yeah, I said it, Aemon, the Kingslayer. And unfortunately, Aemon happens to be inside the royal chamber. While he watches from afar, Lord Burroughs mocks the lineage and uncomfortable tension hangs over the entire proceedings. Aegon has come with a marriage pact to seal things, while Luke comes with a simple reminder. Go home, pup, he says. But unfortunately, he cannot leave. Aemon does not want to fight the boys, but throws a knife over and demands Luke give up his eye. Thankfully, Lord Burroughs stopped this from becoming an all-out massacre, prompting Luke to hurry up to his dragon. Now, in the skies, everything comes undone. It all goes to shambles. Luke is stalked by Aemond and his dragon, which it literally dwarfs the size of his own. Now, Aemond only intends to taunt the boy, or at least that's what he wanted to do, but he loses control of his dragon thanks to a burst of dragon fire from Arex. Everything spirals out of control. And guess what? In the end, both Luke and his dragon are slain. R.I.P. Daemon returns to Dragonstone and Rhaenyra clearly receives the news. Her face turned in anger. Now here are a few details that seem to have been changed in the book when compared to the TV show. One of the daughters of Burroughs mocks Aemon for losing an eye and goes on to further say, I hope you did not lose one. I hope you did not lose one ball, but an eye. And this, <laughs> this was right after Aemon made an attempt to take Jace's eye. Savage much? Another interesting piece was how they made Rhaenyra stay calm in this episode until she lost her son. That's not how it is in the book. See, in the book, she quickly acted, and that is what exactly what Daemon was expecting. This time in the scene, she wanted to build allies and see where that's left off. They made the badass Rhaenyra, like the badass Rhaenyra, a softie in this episode. But then again, I guess it was just for us to see her lose a lot before she goes to King's Landing. Like, it only makes sense for the progression. And when we look at the other side, in the books, Otto Hightower was not the person who delivered the message. It was another maester. But I guess with all that Otto has been doing, he needed to present himself. I think there are a few changes that happen in this scene. Of course, we cannot mention it all, 
We just want the fanatics of the House of the Dragon to accept it and enjoy it while things unravel. Rhaenyra had lost so much, yeah? And that chilling look on her face, man, that signaled that she was not a merciful queen no more. Like, she was done with it. Now, the war is well and truly underway. And it would be an understatement to say that we shouldn't get attached to any other characters. Like, have you forgotten what show this is? The battle for the realms is about to take a very messy turn and the ending with Luke's demise is likely to be that turning point where things evolve from being peace to all out carnage. A day of reckoning is coming to Westeros and you can feel that it's going to bubble up nicely in season 2 yeah? Before you leave make sure to subscribe as we will be sharing two, yeah that's right, two, not just one, two interesting theories about the death of King Viserys and Luke. You do not want to miss this when I post the videos.